Thank you. You have a good afternoon. You too. Hello. I talked to Dr. Pohl this morning. He told me to bring my pigeon in. <laughs> I have homing pigeons. I have three pair that are breeding pair, and then I have uh, 20 that I just let fly and will come back. Put your glasses on your shirt. You're not outside now. So. I look better with the glasses, so. <laughs> it's just fun just watching the bird fly and you're waiting for them to come back. That's basically why I do it. It's sick, and I, I don't know what to do at this point. His neck is like bending sideways. I've never seen that before in a pigeon. I drove almost 200 miles. My dad used to have pigeons, and he was the one that showed me, or I just followed his lead, basically. Mr. Paul, how the heck are you? Better than this bird. Joe and Lisa have pigeons, and this one actually has a lot of problems that it, it can't stand up. I've never Charles. had a, a pigeon that looked and like that. And still can eat. Yes. It's very difficult, but when I lay the food down, he will eat. Can you get medicine in his beak so he eats it? Yeah. Sure Good for you. To. Good for you. You're going to try it because you've got nothing to lose. So. Yes. This is a, a brain problem or an equilibrium problem. His one eye is not good, so I think it's a brain problem and he cannot even close his eyes very good. Those things happen more often. Many times it's either a pastorella or a salmonella that is infecting the brain. I'm going to get you medicine and say okay. a prayer. I always want to try. But the main thing is, uh, if you get them soon and you hit them heavy with antibiotics and anti-inflammatories, sometimes they pull through. I've used this before. It has worked for me. Good. Just you know, hope for the best. That's what you have to get into the brain. It's worth a try. Of course. I don't know of anybody else that would have taken the pigeon. I knew if anybody could find what the problem was, the Dr. Pohl would be the one. Thank have you. a good one. Get your boots out of my seat. <laughs> Today I'm going to Henry's farm with Dr. Lisa and Dr. Ray. He has two cows that have a lameness problem. The one with the horns is a cross with the Angus and I think Guernsey. I just enjoy having some cattle. Hello. So two lame cows? She started maybe two days ago, the one over there with the horns. I wasn't as concerned, but the calf is already losing weight. They drop off in weight because they don't get around eating, and the one has a calf, and so the calf will soon be affected by it also. Well, let's get one in the shoe, and then we'll get the other one. There she goes. Hi, sweetheart. Looks like there's an abscess down at the bottom. There's a little bit of pus drainage. This is what actually is it? Foot rot. Would they be getting it from going through swampy areas? It can happen if there's just a little injury, it lets yeah. the bacteria in. Having wet feet, though, doesn't help. The steer has an abrasion in between the spaces of his foot. You can feel like cracks and crevices. It smells nasty. That's why my hand is disgusting. Uh, foot rot has a pretty distinctive smell. I can smell it off your hands yeah, right now. <laughs> It doesn't seem very diagnostic, maybe fancy, like drawing blood to find out what's wrong with them, but it's usually a pretty specific way to diagnose this disease. What do you guys want to use? I think an oxy -tit. We'll go get injections, we'll be back. I think I have a lot to teach the new vets. You learn a lot your first year out. How much you want to give? This is one mig per hundred. I already know, geez, it's a big meal. We're just going to do some antibiotics, and she's going to clear up on her own. That looks better. Got it? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Does it feel like an abscess or just a swelling? I think she's got the same problem. Yeah, that's what it looked like. So I found the same thing going on with the cow. I'm going to stay up on this side. Okay, go for it. We're gonna do the same treatment, antibiotics and anti-inflammatories. She is all set. We'll take that halter off her, let her go. Two animals came down with the same thing. That means that something's going on in the environment. If another one comes up with one... Uh, we can get you antibiotics for it. 
there's a lot of swampy areas out here with a whole bunch of brush, so they likely stepped on something and got infected. As long as we treat them, keep an eye on them, they'll be good. Well, have a good day. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for stopping by. I think they checked it out well, and I expect it to clear up. Upset. We got two camels. One's Abby. She's 18 years old. Anna is 16. Hello. Hello. How are you? <sighs> don't ask. <laughs> We're running so fast, yeah. I don't know which way I'm going. These are dromedary camels, which are the one hump. Each one's got their own personality, and they're a lot of work, but they're a lot of fun to work with. Okay, you got two camels. Got two in there. camels, Anna and Abby. And so all we I'll do to the bit is TB test today. TB and brucellosis. Rick wants to start milking camels. In order to sell milk like this, these camels had to be TB tested. <laughs> Head goes up every time. I know. Today he'll have some challenges because <laughs> they can't hear their babies and they're not around. Yes, I love you too, but don't run over me. They were stinkers getting in the trailer, so it's hard to say what might happen today. Blood out of the neck if I can't help it. Abby and Anna will need a blood draw and a TB skin test by the tail. Uh. Still. still. Camels are ruminants like cows. Anna. This is, this is good now. Yes, don't have to bite me either. I know you do that. And you can treat them like this. Hey. Except they don't act like cows. Cut it. See that? I got it. Right. Camels are nice animals, but they can kick with the front leg. Careful. I know. Yeah, that's how they kick. They can kick with their hind legs. I haven't done anything yet. And if they miss you, then they use their head as a club. Done. Okay. All right. But that's neither here nor there. After Anna's feisty resistance. Hi, girl. Ha! I got the TBN already. Abby's chill disposition. <laughs> gets Dr. Pole over the hump. All I need is blood. Hi, sweetie. You're fine. See, this doesn't even hurt. See what I mean? Don't make it easy when you can make it hard, right? That's right. Rick knows how to handle these camels. Between the three of us, we got our work done. See what I mean? How's that, huh? That's good. I'm happy with that. Real happy with what Dr. Pohl did. In three more days, we can read the results and see how they came back. Do they have four teeth like yeah, a cow? four. Just hoping for good, clean results. Huh. See, I learned everything new. So if we do sell milk, people know the milk's coming from good healthy herd. We got some camel milk, though. I have never tasted it, but they say it's good. Well, we got some if you want to try it. There's a lot of benefits to the camel milk. There's 52 units of insulin per liter in camel milk, which is real helpful, you know, for diabetics. Just like cows. Mm -hmm. Just like cows. I tried it. It was really uh, not bad. Tasted pretty good. Have to get Tastes your mom. Good. Hey, yeah. mom, come here. Yeah. Camel milk. Drink Cheese here. game. Oh, yeah, she is. How do you think? It's OK. It's not bad. <laughs> Since I was brave enough to try it. Get up in oh, there. Oh, maybe. Now my goal for today is to try to get everyone else to drink it, too. I drank it. No, thank you. ASMR 3. It's been a long day at the clinic. Okay, bring it over right now. We have no still fat energy with small hands. Dr. Nicole's day. And we'll check up. Is about to get a little bit longer. A big me goat. I had one at three o'clock and he maybe thinks there's another one. Those are fun. I'll stay for that. David and his family are bringing in their goat, Marble. Yep, there's goats. She had one kid earlier today and nothing else since then, so they're afraid something might be stuck in there. She's had four the last two times, is what we were told. OK. We're expecting three more. Hi, Mama. She still looks really big, so we're concerned that Marble's in pain. Maybe one of the babies is turned around inside. Is she still trying to push? It looked like some placenta came out. OK. 
I know. It's really important to make sure that a kid is not stuck in our birth canal. I know, Mom. Hold on, hold on. Our goat, Marble, had her first baby, and we think she has more inside. She still looks really big. I know, I know, Mom. It's after hours, and it's really important that we see this goat, make sure that a kid is not stuck in our birth canal. She's had four babies each of her last two pregnancies, so uh, a little bit nervous. I know. She's a seven-year-old Nigerian dwarf, hardly makes any noise. No, Mama. She's a very sweet, happy goat. First thought, more, more in there, you think? On vaginal exam, I am trying to see if I can feel anything. She's not really pushing too much. I know, I know, Mom. Feel for any tears, any abnormalities, or anything wrong with the mom. Just double checking. Yep. She is super tiny. Yes. It's a good thing Dr. Bolden <laughs> didn't attempt this. Nope. I don't feel anything else. Okay, good. Well, as far good. as I can get my hand in there. Yeah. It's common for goats to have multiple kids, but there are no more kids. Mom's just gonna have one. Where is the baby at? No. <laughs> My kids, about a year ago, they decided that one of them wanted a dog and one wanted a goat. First one got his dog right away, and the younger kid got his goat about a month ago. Is it he or she? A little she, it looked like. Hi. Double check me, though. Hi, sweetheart. And they've been super excited about having some babies ever since we got her. Yep, little girl. <laughs> I just keep an eye on her, make sure that she is doing okay overnight. Okay. Um, keep an eye on baby, make sure he starts nursing. Prognosis for Marble is great. Appreciate you sticking around. Yeah, you're welcome. We are really relieved that Marble is not in pain trying to deliver more babies. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Dr. Nicole, outstanding, very fast, very quick. Glad she was here for us. Let's go. The whole army is coming, Chris. Today, Paul Vett is running a four for one deal. So now we can charge you four farm calls. Pat from House Farms called that uh, they have a cow with a DA, displaced apomasum. Come on, guys, move. We strive to have healthy cows, and when Doc Paul comes out here, he's always very effective. The way we're doing it here is not taught at vet school. We gotta teach them. They all do surgeries. So I'm bringing Dr. Nicole, Dr. Lisa, and Dr. Ray out so I can show them how to do it. <whistles> Holy cow, we got a bunch of animals in here. <laughs> Surgery is a lot harder on the cow than rolling them on their back and stitching them. To avoid an intense and costly surgery, Pole Vet Docs treat a DA a simpler way. So Dr. Pole really likes doing the flip and stitch. Flip and stitch. Flip and stitch. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. Watch out. We do a flip and stitch to help put one of the stomachs of a cow back in place. OK, here. You can see it. Feel the bump there? Mm-hmm. This cow has a displaced abomasum. I can see it from here. Mm-hmm. The apomasum is a stomach that normally is only filled with water, but if the cow goes off feet, it can fill up with gas and it floats to the top. There we go, I got it. Watch out, let it fall. Sometimes the cow is unlucky and the apomasum flips out of position and causes a little twist. It's really uncomfortable, so we need to fix it. Man, she fell right too. I know, I told you. Amazing. In order to get the stomachs back into place and keep it in place, you roll the cow. Watch the hind legs there. And when you roll the cow on their back, that gas pulls the stomach back in place. This is where you always have to suture. Listen quickly, everybody. What you listen for is a certain pinging sound. Just like, what do you call it, a basketball? A basketball being bounced. Hear it? Mm-hmm. Okay, there's only one spot where it should be stitched. Feel that, you can twirl the needle around. 
it has to be that loose. The whole secret is you cannot do it tight. You don't want to get the stitches too tight. Some slack, plenty of slack. And always leave a head width loose like that. If you put it tight, they die. Don't ask me why. Okay, turn it loose. Now, watch the sutures. They should tighten up. So when we roll the cow through, then you can see that the stitches pull tight. Are they? Yep. yep. See? And then you know darn well that you got the stitches in the right place and the stomach is attached to the belly wall. Always in that spot, guys, okay? Doc Cole brought three vets here today and he's very thorough on making sure that they saw what was going on with the cow. See ya. Okay, guys. Okay, Thanks. thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, it was four vets for the price of one today, so. <laughs>
wild. Come on, let's go. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Of the dozens of cows that need to be checked. Scared the bejeepers out of you, huh? Few will be easy. All these cows are beef cows. That means they are in the pasture many times all year round. They don't like to be caught. These animals are free roaming animals and they like their freedom. Ready? There she goes. Watch out, she's coming through here. Hey! They have a fall day where they sell beef cows from all over the state. But the buyer has to know whether they're pregnant and whether they are pregnant a long time or a short time. I gotta start digging here like a gold mine. Because it all depends how much food he has to keep these cows through the winter. Three, two months. Not quite three months, but three months is close enough. When I pregnancy check them and I call out a number, that's the month they are pregnant. This little thing is already five months pregnant. You can tell that there are many owners of these cows. Some cows are in very good shape and pregnant. Oh, she's pregnant. Oh, come on, around the corner, there you go. It all depends on the owner, how he's feeding them. She's gonna have a fall calf, six and a half. How much pasture they have or if they got anything extra. And the pasture must have been good because you know, these cows are all in good shape. Yes, <laughs> when we were called, they thought they had 30 to do, but by the time we got there, it has grown to 65. But it goes very smooth because everybody knows what to do. Last one. And, you know, it's fun work. <laughs> I love working at the Claire Livestock. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> Alrighty, we'll see ya.